Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott from Nostalgic Nightmares and welcome to my review of Goosebumps Horrorland number 4, Scream of the Haunted Mask. Um, just before I start talking about this book in particular, there's a couple of things I just want to mention. Uh, firstly, my next review will either be one of the original Goosebumps series or one of the Goosebumps series 2000. I have read one of each of the series, I'm not going to say which ones yet, just so it's not a big surprise, but... I mean, I like it when I follow YouTubers where I don't know what they're going to upload next. I like having a little bit of a shock like when I just randomly go onto YouTube and see what they've just uploaded and it's a surprise. And so, meh, I don't know if you like that or not, but I'm going to do the same thing. So it'll either be one of the Series 2000s or one of the originals. I'll probably do like a little bit of an introduction to each series as well, uh, like I have done with Ghost of Fear Street and Shivers. Uh, just where I kind of show you which books I've got. A little bit about my history with that series and talk about any interesting facts that I know or anything like that. So that'll be my next review, so please tune into that. I'll be recording that probably in the next day or two. And also I've been asked to do a collection video just to kind of show which books that I've got. Um, I will be doing that eventually. The reason I haven't done it yet is because, as you can probably guess, I don't have like a video camera or anything. I have tried to record stuff on my iPad before, which I've done once maybe twice like some really short videos but when i've tried to upload something that's like more than like a couple of minutes it really struggles to do anything with it it seems to really damp on the quality or when i try and upload it it takes like forever like a 20 minute video takes a while to upload via youtube for me because my upload speed here is not very good uh, but when i try and upload it via like a two minute video via my ipad it seems to take about the same amount of time so that's not really kind of how i want to move forward with this so I will be getting a, a video camera at some point, which in which case, when I do, I'll finally do like a, here's all the books that I've got video. Uh, but until then, um, it's just going to be this way for now, I'm afraid, guys. Uh, but I hope you tune in, and please share my videos if you like them. Uh, I'd like to get a few more subscribers. I'm looking to hit like 25 at some point. I'm only on 18 as I record this, so 25 is not too far away. Uh, thirdly, for anyone who does listen to this, I have a new idea for a Goosebumps series. That's going to include a few other YouTubers coming up. Um, I can't say much about it yet because I want us to kind of... I'm talking to some other YouTubers at the minute. And then we're going to try and record the first kind of episode of it. Um, uh, so I'll just keep your eyes out and ears out. And I'll keep mentioning it on future reviews to let you know what the progress is. At the minute, I'm just in the planning stages. Just need to get some more people involved. And yeah, so there should be hopefully some exciting Goosebumps things coming up in the future. But anyway, that's my updates done for today. On to this book, which is number four, as I said, in the Horrorland series. It is Scream of the Haunted Mask. And for anybody who knows anything about Goosebumps, which most of the people listening to this will do, The Haunted Mask is one of the most famous Goosebumps books, one of the most famous TV episodes. Um, it's basically the story of Carly Beth, who is the same character in this one. And she gets a Halloween mask... Um, a really scary Halloween mask at Christmas. No, what am I talking about? <laughs> she gets a really scary Halloween mask at Halloween uh, to try and get back at some people who are bullying her. Uh, but she puts the mask on. It won't come off. It kind of molds into her skin. And she starts to turn evil. Um, so this is a sequel to that one. and a, Well, and a sort of a sequel to Haunted Haunted Mask 2. I'll get onto that a little bit more as I go through. I think I want to do a bit more reviewing as I go through this time maybe, just try something a bit different out rather than go through the whole story and then review at the end. Um, but other than this one and the two from the original series, the only other Haunted Mask book that I know about is Wanted, The Haunted Mask, which is part of the Most Wanted series. As far as I'm aware, there's been no Haunted Mask books since, but I presume that with it being one of the most popular series of Goosebumps books, and with, um, pardon me, um, R.L. Stein bringing out more books soon. No doubt the Haunted Mask will make um, a reappearance at some point. So on to this book in particular. The main section of the book is 103 pages long and 27 chapters. In this one, I think the fact that it's only 100 odd pages kind of works in its favour. I'm going to have to say it up front, I wasn't the biggest fan of this book. Um, but I'll explain why. There's, there's a process behind why I wasn't. It's not that it's necessarily a bad book, it's just not a haunted mask book, in my opinion. Um, but as we get through, I'll explain more at why. But yeah, the, the short length, I believe, kind of worked in its favour because it kind of moved at a fairly quick pace in general. So the book begins with our Carly Beth, who we know from the Haunted Mask 1. 
and she kind of has these dreams and these visions of this mask and she can hear it kind of calling out to her and screaming for her and trying to kind of get more control over her and for one reason or another we completely ignore the fact that at the end of the haunted mask her brother put the mask on i believe and that was like the big cliffhanger ending which was never addressed in the haunted mask 2 because she was in that as well although she wasn't a main character one of the bullies called steve was um but it's never addressed the fact that he had the mask on really there's kind of a throwaway line later on about it but uh so for some reason she has this mask in the basement of the house that she lives in and like i say she's getting these visions of it and it kind of calls out to her and so she kind of talks to sabrina about it and for those who've read the haunted mask sabrina's her best friend so it's good that they've carried on keeping the same characters and in a kind of a very cliche tv way where you've got a character who explains everything to the audience by going oh my god i can't believe that this 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 happened to us which you wouldn't say because if you were lived through it you wouldn't just say a b c d e and f happened to us you just go i can't believe that happened so in a conversation with carly uh okay, carly and sabrina they talk about what happened with the halloween mask and how they did how they defeated it and how they got it off her in a very this is what you need to know if you've never had the haunted mask kind of way so Carly's really scared that this might happen again and Sabrina's advice really is to get rid of it really I don't know why I just said really twice but yeah Sabrina's Sabrina? Sabrina <laughs> uh, Sabrina's advice is to get rid of the mask and just try and get out like put it somewhere that's not near you so it can't kind of call out to you I guess I don't really know what, there's not a big plan just get rid of the mask in case something bad's gonna happen was that Serena's plan or was it Carly Bass's plan? This is a really bad start. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, it's not my favourite book, so my notes aren't very detailed. But anyway, yeah, so they met, they talk about what happened. And St Stephen Chuck... Stephen Chuck? Stuck and Chief. Stephen Chuck. Stephen... Why does that sound, sound right? I know it's Stephen Chuck, but because I said Stuck and Chief, now I say Stephen Chuck, it sounds like that's the wrong way to say it. <laughs> Steve and Chuck come along. And again, it's not mentioned what happens to them either, because Steve gets a, haunt, a mask that takes over his personality as well. Um, so we completely ignore what happened in that book. And they do some sort of prank on her, but Carly Bass not scared anymore. But as she's talking to them, she hears the, the mask screaming to her. Nothing really comes of that until later on. Um, another storyline which comes really important later on. I say later on, but it's kind of all the way through the book. I don't even know what I'm talking about this time. This is really bad. This is probably going to be my worst review from just from the start of it. <laughs> anyway, Steve... No, fuck's sake, Scott. What are you doing? <laughs> Carly and Sabrina have a job after school. And they work at Tumble Down Farms. Which is basically like a kid's nursery. Uh, where they've got like young kids that they take care of. And they play games with them. And they do like art projects. And it reminded me... I don't know if you know about this. But there's a Family Game episode. If you've not seen it, I'm going to be talking nonsense here. But in one of the cutaway gags, it talks about this farm. Like, Peppa Pitch Farm remembers. Or something like that. I don't know why. It just reminded me of that. Something farm remembers. I, I, I say I'm talking bollocks here. I should really go back to the book, Scott. Go back to the book. Ignore what you're thinking. Go back to the book. They're at the farm with the kids. And the whole thing they're doing is they're coming up with like Halloween projects and things to do for Halloween. And as they arrive there, the class is kind of going out of control. They're throwing things. They're being boisterous. They're being noisy. And another worker there called Laura comes in, who's kind of in overhead. I think she works there more often. Laura's kind of a bit of a private school girl. She's worked there for quite a while. And there's also Mrs. Lang, who's the owner of the nursery. And Mrs. Lang's idea to get the kids to calm down is to go apple picking, because kids love apple picking. So they go out into the, into the woods. Not the woods. like a field area where there's some apple trees. And there's also this barn that's nearby, like an abandoned stable. But Carly th thinks she hears, like, horses whinnying. And uh, as she goes towards it, like, Laura goes like, No, don't go towards the barn! And they take all the kids back inside. Um, and they come up... They come back in, and Laura basically tells them the story, which Mrs. Lang told her. Basically, basically, that farm, or the barn outside, was a riding stable years ago, like, hundreds of years ago, or whatever. And uh, one night there was people in the farmhouse, which is where they have the school now, and they could hear all this screaming from the farmhouse, the barn. 
and it's like not even human screaming it was like really weird animal screaming so they kind of figured it was the horses that were almost screaming and they went to the barn and all the horses were dead from fright and basically what happened was the stable boy put on the scary mask to scare the horses ended up scaring the horses to death but in the process got trampled to death um, and all the horses kind of crushed each other against the doors as well as they were stampeding so basically it was a bit of a a massacre really and they say that the mask disappeared at that point but every Halloween it reappears this is where I started to have major problems not just the fact that they ignored some of the other books but from what I do remember the original book and I reread up this before I read I did this review today in the original Halloween uh, haunted mask book the mask was created by a guy to kind of in the process of creating a better face for himself because he was upset about how ugly he looked so we're trying to create these faces to be better but these particular ones kind of were distorted and disfigured when he put them on and they became evil and I think they called them the unloved so and they lived in the shop with the the, home, the shop owner until Carly Beth got one and the shop owner's even in it later on so how are they going to have this mask that appeared like a hundred years ago and it appears every Halloween doesn't make any sense to me it seems like they're trying to mesh two stories together they've got this ghost story about the horses and they've got this mask story about the haunted mask and Carly Beth that they're trying to put together into one cohesive story and really missing the mark here and I'll explain more about that later on but it really doesn't feel like the person who wrote this it may well have been R.L. Stein and I apologize if there's something that I'm not seeing in this book but it just seems like they're just missing out on kind of the fundamental basics of the haunted mask itself anyway because of the story and this whole scary mask thing and all the screaming and the visions that Carly Beth has had she decides to get rid of it she can hear a voice saying like it's almost ha it's almost Halloween or whatever but she decides to get rid of it and they have another trip to the skate stables because I think Sabrina wants to do like a school report on the stables and the, the massacre that happened there. And they go inside and they're taking pictures but as they go in she sees like this small mound of earth just been freshly dug outside like a small grave. But they don't really kind of pay much attention to it until later on. But they go inside and they're taking pictures and Carly Beth brings carrots for the dead horses because dead horses love carrots um yeah <laughs> it was it was weird i don't, didn't really get why she did that i don't know if it was like a a mark of respect but uh it was still weird and really out of place um but they clearly did it to kind of lay groundwork for something that happens later on as they're at the stable and sabrina's taking pictures they hear these noises coming from inside like the paddocks and uh, they're convinced it's a ghost and then they're convinced it's Stephen Chuck playing the joke on them and then when they realise that Stephen Chuck aren't there they're convinced it's a ghost again but then oh no my carrots have disappeared into thin air because that's scary disappearing carrots kids get really scared of disappearing carrots yeah well done or else <laughs> there is a point to the disappearing carrots but when you read it it's the end of a chapter as well and like I'm going to mention later on, it is my worst end of chapter for this book. They're just like, oh no, the carrots have gone. <laughs> it, 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 yes, it has a point. And yes, it comes into play. But it's not like, oh no, the carrots have gone. It's like, the end of chapters are meant to be, oh no, I need to see what happens next. Not, <gasps> missing vegetables. <laughs> it really tickled me. And I'm sorry if I sound disrespectful. It really fucking tickled me. So yeah. The carrots disappear, they run out of the barn because they're freaked out by what's going on and all the weird noises. Um, they're, they're kind of walking towards like a bus stop or something. And they hear some... Do they hear weird noises or do they just look back? I think Carly looks back at the barn like from a distance and sees a boy crouched on top of the stable, as you do, and watching them. So Spider-Man's clearly here as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, if it kind of flashes forward to later on, they're back at the farm, tumble, tumble down farm. And they all agree to work Halloween evening. They don't really have any plans. I'm going to guess Carly Beth doesn't really want to do Halloween much these days after what happened to her. So they all agree to work Halloween. 
Chuck Carlybeth goes to the stable and the boy that was crouched on top appears out of nowhere and he reveals himself as a guy called Clark. And they're talking about the stable and the history of the stable and the storyline about the masks and the, and the ghosts. And he begins laughing at her. He thinks she's really stupid for laughing at her. No, he thinks she's really stupid for believing in this ghost story. And he says that he lives there as well. But then he kind of changes his mind as he lives nearby, he doesn't live at the barn. It's kind of one of these fake out, yes, I live at the barn, but he actually lives nearby. Um, but as she leaves, when he's, once he's laughed at her and insulted her, <clears throat> she hears horse noises again, like the horse is like crying or something. But anyway, that night, <clears throat> pardon me, she is walking home from Tumbledown Farm and she stumbles across the shop from Haunted Mask 1. Now, again, I have problems here because I'm sure the shop kind of was closed or it disappeared or it shut down. Again, I'm probably wrong here. But anyway, the shop, which is still there, which you would have probably tried to kind of burn down by now, knowing full well what the masks in the shop are like, is still there. And she tries to get into the shop and it's the same owner from the other book as well. So it's like the old guy who created these masks, he's still here. And it, it makes a point of mentioning that he's reading an old tattered book called New Faces. And the reason that I bring this up, because it's like a nothing point, it's like a sentence, and there's nothing said about it. The reason I bring this up, <clears throat> pardon me, I've got a bit of a scratchy throat today, as I have quite often, is if you listen to my reviews. I bring this up because um, I believe there's something in that book in terms of there could be a future a book or a future series here. Maybe like a whole Haunted Mask series about this New Faces. This might be the book that he used to create the, the masks. And we already know that there's like loads of masks in that shop that are the unloved. And so far we've had the one that turns you evil and the one that turns you into an old man. And there's these other masks and I want to know what these other masks are. I want to know more about them. I want to see what they are. I want to know more about the mythology of them. Because the mythology that we get in this book and the continuity is odd. And I'll tell you why. She's talking to the man about this mask. And she's like, please take this mask back. I don't want it anymore. You know what happened last time. I managed to defeat it, but it's trying to get me again. Take it. And he says, the mask does not accept defeat. No one has ever defeated it before. You're the only one who's ever destroyed it. And like the mask now wants her more because he, she destroyed it, I think. But he also mentions that there's someone else out there who, who owned the mask in the past. And they want it back. Now herein lies a plot hole to me. Now yes, we are to believe that the stable boy had this mask, he owned it, and he died. So maybe he's a ghost and he wants the mask back. Maybe it's Clark. Yes. However, if I was Carly Beth and, and someone said to me, you're the only person who ever destroyed or ever defeated this mask. You're the only person who's ever managed to get it off. Which is a lie because he created the mask. So surely he would have to get it off at some point. Anyway. And then they say, someone else owned the mask before and they want it back. That implies that someone else had the mask on. And that someone else had took the mask off. Which, t to me, the first thing I'd say is, well, how can someone else own it if I'm the only person who's ever, um, you know, ever took it off? Or then I would also say, if I'm the only other person that's owned it and they've managed to take it off or they've not managed to take it off, does that mean they're a ghost? Is there a ghost after me? Carly Beth, why are you not asking these questions? Because, you know, it's really odd. And also, Carly's brother... Put the fucking mask on at the end of her end of the haunted mask one. He did. That was a cliffhanger. And he even says after she leaves the shop, she goes home. Noah makes a joke about putting the mask on again, but it's never ever mentioned. How did he get the mask off? Was it because Carly loved him? But even still, but at the same time, in the haunted mask, she manages to take it off like once, maybe twice, before it gets stuck to her. I'm really confused about the logic of this. Again, like I said with the Monster Blood book, if you listen to my review of Monster Blood for Breakfast and the inaccuracies between the Monster Blood books, once I've read The Haunted Mask 1, 2 and, and once The Haunted Mask, I presume there's no other ones out by then, I will, do a, I will do a video where I talk about The Haunted Mask. I might even get other YouTubers involved and talk about what happens in book 1, 2, here and the next one and how it's inaccurate with each other and see if we can come up with some sort of logic set of rules between what is going on with this mask and the history of this mask because right here and right now i are confused and let me just have a quick swig of a drink because my mouth is getting dry sorry about that guys oh 
energy drink. Look. So, I like this book. I feel like I'm shitting on it from a great height, and I don't mean to. I love The Haunted Mask. The episode itself used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. And I like the mask itself and the and the kind of story behind it, if it made sense. At the minute, I'm a bit confused, and I might just be missing something from the first book or the second book that I don't remember, or even wanted might explain some things. I don't know. But right now, I'm just a bit confused about kind of the history of it. Did this man create it, or has it been around for hundreds of years? You know, I feel like there's a, a mismatch of um, stories going on here. But going back to the main storyline itself, nothing much happens with the shop owner. She basically just says, he basically just says, there's nothing I can do for you. See ya. And when she gets home, when Noah makes the joke about the mask, her wearing the mask, whatever, she goes to find the mask to bury it or to get rid of it, but the mask is already gone. And then it cuts forward to Halloween. This is where things start to kind of kick up a notch. It's Halloween. She's at Tumbledown Farm with Sabrina, Laura, Mrs. Lang, who's in the office, I think. Maybe Mrs. Lang, who's around, and Clark's around as well. And the project they've come up with is for the kids to use paper bags and to write on them and draw on them and make Halloween masks from them. Not necessarily the safest thing to do in the world, putting bags on kids' heads, but I presume they've all got to cut um, like mouth holes and stuff out of them. So, yeah, they're making paper bag mask things. And uh, Carly goes into the office to get like marker pens and she sees this kind of magazine newspaper thing and it kind of d- goes into the history of the Tumbledown farm. And it talks about the farm years ago and what happened years ago. But she sees a picture of the people from years ago. And there's a guy in it who looks the identical spitting image of Clark. So she's convinced now that Clark is the stable boy. Clark died, he wore the mask. And he's now back trying to get the mask off her because he's a ghost. So being the subtle lady that she is, Carly Beth basically storms out. And when Clark appears, she runs up to him and goes, You're a ghost. And he goes, Yeah, I am a ghost. And then he's like, oh, 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 I'm only kidding. I'm not a ghost. Don't be silly. And, uh, oh, that's after he says, I am a ghost. I'm going to sh- destroy everyone in this room. And then he kind of goes, yeah, that picture was my grandfather. I look a lot like my grandfather. It wasn't me. Um, but she starts kind of interrogating him. She doesn't really believe him. Um, but as she's kind of digging into him, all the kids start screaming. And this is where the book actually takes a pretty dark turn the kids are screaming and she turns around to see what's going on and all the kids paper bags have been pulled onto their heads pulled down and are suffocating them like like magically kind of like grasping around the face so they can't breathe i mean that is dark that is a room full of children being suffocated to death (laughs) again i don't think kids will actually pick up on that necessarily but as an adult i'm like what the hell is going on here these kids are literally being suffocated to death but she turns to Clark and is like, please stop what you're doing, like, stop trying to kill them. And she grabs him to kind of shake him. But she grabs him and she can feel him, so she's like, well, you're not a ghost because I can feel you, so what's going on? And then the, the main doors to the, to the barn or to the farm fly open and Laura comes storming in and her hair's like flying everywhere and she's looking really wild and she's like, bring me the haunted mask in a more feminine, scary voice than what I can just do. But she basically screams like, bring me the haunted mask. You better hurry. I can't rest until I have it. And da, 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 Laura is the ghost. And she's after the haunted mask. And she's floating around the room. And she's suffocating these kids. Who take quite a long time to suffocate to death. I'm not going to lie. Um, in a typical James Bond villain fashion. She explains her whole story. And her backstory. And it's basically her father owned Tumble Down Farm. And it was her that actually wore the haunted mask, as a joke, to scare the stable boy. But when she put the mask on, it kind of changed her, and it made her more evil. So she waited at the farm for him, and when he went into the the barn, she scared the horses. They trampled him to death, and they kind of um, crushed each other. And it doesn't really fully explain what happens to her, I don't think. I'll take, try and take a quick flick through it as I'm talking, but I don't remember it ever really fully explaining why she kind of uh, is she like what? 
Like, did she die? No. I didn't know the mask was evil. I didn't know the evil would change me forever. I've been waiting here at the farm for so long. Yeah, it doesn't really explain what happens to her after that part. If it changes her forever, does that mean she turns evil until the day she dies? Did she die that night in the farm and become a ghost? Again, doesn't really explain. But she'd overheard Carly Beth talking about the mask to Sabrina, and so she knew that it was the same mask, and so conveniently they're in the same location. Other than in Fright Night, if you'd please listen to my review of Fright Night, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy book, but I loved it. There's a whole thing about how the bad guy is in, just happens to be in the same place as the the events that take place because he's kind of waiting for something to appear but it explains that he uses magic to predict where it's going to be oh pardon me it's burped I do burp a lot in these reviews I'm so sorry it's going to talk so fast and so loud it kind of brings up a lot of gas um, in that book he's waiting for a, a specific item which happens to be the suit of armor to appear in this location and he explains that he uses magic to know where it's going to be but in this one the fact that the farm that this haunted mask thing happened at just happened to be in the same place as Carly Beth works. It's a little bit coincidental. Anyway, she knew that the mask was there because of Carly Beth, and she knew that her wait was over, so she demands to know where the mask is. She wants it back or she's going to kill everyone. Carly Beth is like, I don't know where the mask is. I genuinely don't. And she hears a voice going, I know where it is, and turns around and it's Sabrina. Da, da, da. <laughs> Sabrina stole the mask. And she stole the mask to protect Carly Beth because she knew that Carly Beth was having nightmares. And if you remember earlier on, when they go to the horse's stable, there's a little burial ground outside the, the stable. And that is where Sabrina buried the mask. So they actually walked past it earlier on in the book. So, yeah, so she took, she took it and buried it to protect Carly Beth. But, uh, yeah, so Carl, Carl, that's my brother. Carl, <laughs> my brother's not in this book. Clark tries to attack Laura because she's obviously trying to kill all these kids um, but uh, Laura kind of flings her arm or whatever and uh, Clark flies across the room so is Laura a ghost or is she a witch again inconsistencies <laughs> Clark flies across the room and kind of smacks his head into a wall and goes unconscious but uh, Carly Beth goes yeah Carly Beth goes outside and she runs towards where the grave is to get the mask back because she wants to save these kids at this point she's not worried about the mask itself she got a class full of kids suffocating to death so she grabs the mask, she runs back to the school, and Laura's like, Give it to me, I've been waiting so long. <laughs> She's clearly like an old raspy man, who sounds like he smokes 40 a day, even though I never smoke. Um, so as Carly Beth comes in with a mask, Laura like dives at her to get it back, and in a really good twist, and the one part of the book where I kind of went, Oh shit, this is going to get good. To stop Laura getting the mask, Carly decides to put the mask on herself. And so the chapter ends where Laura's coming towards her to get the mask and Carly goes, like, fuck you, and she puts the mask on herself. Which, if you'd read the first book, you know how big a deal this is. Because she spent most of the first book trying to get it off and the, the consequences this mask had on her. So the fact that she actually decides to put it on is a big fucking step. And they actually, like I said, the only point where she went, oh shit, this is getting good. So Laura's like screaming at her to take it off because, you know, her mask. But like, as you know, Except for the bit over the beginning of the first book, which we kind of gloss over. Once the mask's on, you can't get it off unless someone shows you like a symbol of love. But uh, Mrs. Lang comes into the room at this point and she's like freaking out because there's one woman who's like floating around the room going crazy who works for her. There's another girl that works for her that's got this evil mask on acting like a demon. And there's 30, well there's like 20 maybe kids suffocating to death. <laughs> Not the kind of thing you want to walk into. So she manages to get all the kids out. I presume the spell kind of wears off. Well, the magic wears off as they leave the room. Um, like Laura's again screaming at Carly Beth, trying to rip the mask off her. But Carly Beth can already feel the evil of the mask kind of seeping into her pores and taking over her body. So they begin to have like a fight, which is not much of a fight because Carly Beth can't grab Laura because she's a ghost. <clears throat> but Laura can grab Carly Beth because she's not a ghost. And herein lies another issue. How can a ghost work in a nursery for... I want to say years, because she mentioned staying at the barn for so long. I would guess it'd be years. And no one's ever touched her. I, I find that kind of highly unlikely. I know it's one of these little things that kids don't think of. So when as an adult, I'm reading far too much into it. But the fact that she's a ghost, unless she's got one of these weird spells, which she's somehow using to do, to do magic, 
and she can put a spell on herself to kind of com become corporeal. Um, for those who don't know, that means like solid, I guess. Like when ghosts become corporeal, they can touch. They can touch them. Um, yeah, I just found that a little odd. Like Carly can't touch her, but she can touch Carly. It's just, I get it. It makes sense, but I don't get how she can work in a nursery for so long and uh, you know not do anything. But uh, they had a bit of a fight. But uh, Carly's kind of winning because she got the mask on. So Laura kind of freaks out and she bolts out of the out of the barn, out of the farm, and she's like running over the field. But Carly kind of takes chase over her and she can feel the evil becoming more and more like in what's the word I'm looking for kind of set inside her and as she's like booming across this field chasing after Laura to kill her or whatever she like stops and like screams at the seat at the ceiling at the sky and she's like I can't even try and do it but I was picture it like a like a Jurassic Park T-Rex kind of scream <laughs> so she's kind of like, like at the sky and a really scary horrific screamy voice and the mask has finally taken over her completely she's now lost control over herself which is not true because something else happened soon which is proof that the mask is not completely taken over her Ugh. this book has so many plot holes anyway so she screams at the sky and in what appears to be a point where they don't know what to do for, for best she begins to hear this running sound and uh, she's on one side of this field Kyla, uh, Laura's on the other side of the field Sabrina and Clark's probably still unconscious at this point, I'm not really sure, are somewhere else. And she hears this running and running and running and out of like, these trees, all these ghost horses appear and they run across the field and they surround Laura and they stampede around her and she disappears because reasons. <laughs> yeah, these ghost horses appear out of nowhere and uh, trample the ghost to death because... That's realistic. Not realistic, but logical. It's, it's, that happens. And Carly Breath is so evil, so evil, that she picks up a wheelbarrow and throws it through the glass doors of the of the nursery. Don't get me wrong. If that was the start of like a rampage by the haunted mask, amazing. This girl picking up a wheelbarrow. This girl picking up a wheelbarrow. <laughs> a girl picking up a wheelbarrow and... Throwing it through the window of the the nursery doors is a good twist because it's not a twist. It's a good move because it's kind of violence. It's breaking things. It's destroying property. But that's the only thing she does. She picks it up and throws it, and that's the most evil thing she does in the book. So the haunted mask is so evil. All she does is throw something through some glass doors. But she's like. She's so evil, and Sabrina and that come out to help her, but she mentions that there's no love for her anymore, that she can't be helped. But uh, she kind of breaks down a little bit, because reasons. Like, the haunted mask is meant to have taken over at this point, but she's still herself enough to kind of break down. And when she thinks that everything is lost, a horse appears out of nowhere, a ghost horse, and comes up to her and kind of nuzzles her, like kind of brushes against her face. And she strokes a horse, and the ma the mask kind of comes off her. And if you're wondering at this point, how is that a symbol of love? Because that's how you destroy the mask or defeat it. Remember earlier on when I said that she took the carrots into the barn, and the carrots disappeared. The symbol of love is because the ghosts saw Carly bringing them carrots as a sign of affection. So the ghosts love her. So when she was in need. The ghosts came to her, um, to her side, and nuzzled her face, and this was a symbol of love. Yeah, that's a whole load of shit. <laughs> really bad, like it's really bad. I mean, I mean, in the first one, sometimes I see people question the fact this whole paper mache head thing. Is a circle of circle, <laughs> circle of love, but that at least makes sense because it's something like that her mother's created to look like her, and in, in honor of her, and it's kind of like a, a head for a head kind of thing. But this set of carrots that she took for these ghosts, <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, the mask comes off because the ghosts are affection because of the carrots, and she's about to bury the mask again because she doesn't want it to come back to haunt her ever again. But the mask begins to talk to her for reasons and says, You're my favourite Carly Beth. See you next Halloween. The 
and except for the open plot points that uh, I'm about to talk about now. <clears throat> so let me just take another quick drink of my, my drink. Tangy. Yeah, I have quite a lot to talk about in this book. I think I mentioned most of it as I went through, which I might try and do more in the future, so it's not as me talking about the story for half an hour, me talking about the recipe for half an hour. Um, if I talk about things as I come along to them, it might make more sense. I have quite a big list of things that I wasn't happy with, or didn't get explained enough, but again, I mentioned a lot of them. They were things like all the stuff that they ignored from the previous books, all the stuff that they retconned. So, Carly's brother putting the mask on, never got mentioned. Steve putting the mask on, never got mentioned. There's the logic inconsistencies between the history of the mask. The guy was meant to have created these masks not that long ago because he's not immortal as far as I'm aware. He's just the creator and as far as we know he's a human. So therefore he's been around what maybe 60, 70 years? 50 years maybe? I don't know how old he is. But this mask has been around maybe hundreds of years because Laurie wore this mask years ago. So where is this mask from? I believe the first book more than this one. But, you know. Um... <sighs> How did Laura survive having the mask on? Did she survive having the mask on? Did she not? Is that why she's a ghost? But you would have thought she would have mentioned maybe the mask ended up killing her. Or you thought that would be more more of a, of a story. Like, if the, the owner of the shop knew that the mask was on someone and it killed them, why would he not mention that to somebody? Um, how was the ghost working at a school? Because surely at some point the kid's going to touch her because kids run around like havoc. And my nephew's eight years old. And every time I watch a film with him, he just throws himself on top of me, like, put his legs on me or resting his head against me. And I'm just like, stop touching me. <laughs> no, I'm not. But, you know what I mean? Like, kids like to be kind of tactile. And they like to hug you and play with you and tickle you and wrestle you and stuff. And so kids are like, how did Laura get away with that? She didn't because it's bullshit. Also, things like the mask talking at the end. I was the mask talk before and I don't remember. Again, that's, that's one point that... I don't remember from the other two books because I've not read it for so many years. I don't remember the masks ever talking. But again, they might have done. I know they float around a bit, so maybe they did talk. But uh, it seems odd that the mask would wait until the end of the book to say something. But that's just me trying to pick out points, I think. Um, why is Carly Beth the mask's favourite? She doesn't do anything. Laura, for example, killed a boy and a load of horses by the consequences of her wearing the mask. Whereas Carly Beth scared a few people in the original book. Um, didn't really do much. Oh, and Laura also suffocated a lot of kids, or tried to. Um, and threw a boy across the room and hit his head. Carly, for example, scared some boys in the first book, some girls or whatever. But um, she, 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 didn't really do anything in this book other than throw a wheelbarrow through some glass and broke some doors. That's it. She hasn't done anything. So why is Carly Breath her favourite? Surely, if this mask is evil and wants to kind of cause destruction, it would go for Laura. And this is where I think there's an argument about the haunted mask books that comes into play here. And the argument which I've seen someone else mentioned in a review of one of the haunted mask books <clears throat> is that the haunted mask is not primarily evil. Or prim primarily? No. Not, um... There's a word... Primal? No. There's a... Whatever. It's that the haunted mask is not evil itself. What the haunted mask is, is it brings out the evil within you. So the argument is that rather than you putting this mask on and it turns you into an evil person, you put this mask on and it brings out the darkness inside you. So all the anger that you've already got, which for example for Carly Beth, was the anger towards these bullies and towards not feeling scared anymore and wanting to kind of do some payback. It brings it out in her and makes that a more kind of amplified version of what she is. And so it brings out all these feelings and emotions and mag magnifies them. So rather than it making you evil, it kind of brings out your inner evil, the evil within. Which is a fantastic game if you've never played it, the evil within. Um, yeah, so there is an argument that maybe it's Car Carly's her f his favourite because the mask sees something in her. In a way that, say, take the mask as the sorting hat from Harry Potter. The Sorting Hat can see that Harry is a Slytherin deep down because it can talk parcel, it can talk parcel tongue. It's got a bit of um, Voldemort inside him. 
If you've not read all seven books, sorry guys. Um, like when Voldemort did the spell on him, a bit of Voldemort's soul went inside Harry. So Harry is a, is a, uh, a Slytherin deep down, which is why in the new book, The Cursed Child, um, Draco, no, Harry's son is a Slytherin. Because even Harry, the son had tried to put Harry into Slytherin, because he can see that the evil, not the evil, but the darkness within him. It only doesn't put him in there because Harry begs to go in Gryffindor. The Haunting Mask could be the same sort of thing. It can see the evil within you and bring it out in you to, you know, just bring out what's inside you. God God forbid if the mask ever came on me, I've got a lot of anger inside me for certain people and certain things. I'd be a freaking nightmare. <laughs> um, but there is that argument. So maybe the Kylie Beth is the mask's favourite and the mask chooses her because he can see something within her. At this moment in time, I don't see it. I just see that technically Laura is the best one for the mask to go for. Because Laura actually does a lot more damage and a lot more destruction and actually tries to kill people. Whereas Carly Beth doesn't really do a lot. I mean, there is merits to each side, so please let me know what you think. Like I say, I'll do another video on it once I've read all the books and maybe try and get some other YouTubers in discussion about it. But, um, and that's not what my idea is before you think that. It's not about a discussion thing. But you will have to wait and see what my YouTube idea is because I think you're going to love it. Um, yeah, it's just a bit strange, really. Um, the carrots and the ghosts and all that stuff was just slightly odd for me. But that's more of a review than it is an open plot point. It, it, it made sense, but I just found it was weak. Um, and I'd just love to know more about the, max, the masks that were in the shop, you know. But I mentioned that before, like I think they could do like a whole series on the actual masks themselves and what's in the shop. Because there's, there's a lot of backstory in there. I can't imagine they've all just been sat there for years not doing doing anything. And if they have, I'd love a backstory like um, a book itself on on the owner and the different masks that he's done. Because they've all probably had a different effect on him. So, you know what? That's just my view on things that I didn't think really were explained very well. Um, please let me know if you don't agree with me. Because I know there are people that love this book. And I have no doubt that there's good, there is good things about this book. But I will do my review in a second. Let me find what I'm going to do. Right. My worst cliffhanger I mentioned easily before is chapter 11. Where she goes, I glance down and gasp. Sabrina, look. The carrots are gone. Do, 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 do. If you're from England, you know that's the, the ending tune to EastEnders, which is a soap opera that we've got. And they have this really dramatic end music to the end of every episode where they go, duh, 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 duh. If I can, I will get a little um, sound clip to put in. I might not be able to. If not, I'll, put a, I'll try and put a link into <laughs> the, the end of EastEnders because it's so dramatic. Um, it's one of those things in the UK. If you do something really dramatic, people go, duh, 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 But... <laughs> So yeah, oh my god, the carrots are gone, because missing vegetables are fucking terrifying. Yeah. And favourite cliffhanger, as I mentioned before, which I thought was the best twist in the entire book, was chapter 24. I made a terrifying decision. Someone had to, someone had to save the kids. I gripped the haunted mask by its sides. I raised it high, and I pulled it down over my own head. And I thought this was the best part, because... Because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. Do -do 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 -do. Because, <laughs> knowing full well the evil that the mask has, and the danger it's caused her in the past, and the scary things she went through to get it off, the fact that she makes a decision to put the mask on is a big step for Carly Beth. It shows that she's not scared of what the mask is anymore. So the mask in, in some way changed her in the past, because it, she put it on initially to get over the scares, she got over the scares, and now she's willingly putting the mask on, knowing what's going to happen. Knowing probably that Laura is probably more evil than the mask itself, even though there is the argument that the mask made Laura more evil or whatever. Um, she makes a brave decision, knowing full well she's gonna, probably going to be more powerful with the mask on than Laura is, possibly. That, that, that's a really smart decision. Maybe, well, maybe. <laughs> um, it's one of the smartest decisions that I've seen someone make in a Goosebumps book recently, at least out of the Horrorland series. There's a few questionable decisions so far. Um, but I thought it was a really good decision. It was a really good twist. I didn't see it coming. Because I never thought I'd see a, hor a Horrorland or Goosebumps Haunted Mask book where um, 
Carly Beth would have willingly put the mask on again. So I thought that was a really good twist for me. Uh, the, 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 the twist at the end of the book. What happened at the end? Yeah, the end where the the haunted mask talks to her. Um, it was okay. I was a bit confused by it because I don't remember the haunted mask talking in other books. He might have done so. I apologise if I'm wrong. But mainly because I don't get why Carly Beth's his favourite. It's favourite. I know it's got to be because she's the main character of the book, so they're going to try and keep with her. Although it might have been more interesting to see the haunting mask trying to get back towards people that actually did more destruction and Carly Beth having to try and stop the mask itself. I don't know. Maybe the mask trying to reach a more dangerous person might have been better. But um, it just didn't really sit well with me. <clears throat> so, so far, the best twist out of the four that I've read. So, we've got the. What have we got? We've got the mind stealer talking with Slappy's voice. We've got the pirate chants coming over the, the walkie talkie. We've got Matt letting. What kind of Barney was he called? Bradley. Um, face the consequences of non actions and get attacked by the plant. And we've got the haunted mask talking to Carly Beth. The 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 monster blood one's the only end of book twist that I've really liked. The rest I thought was just a twist for the sake of it and didn't really have a lot of sense to it. But at least on this one I understand why they did it. I believe they did it because to kind of leave things open for the haunted mask in the future. And even though she takes the mask off, she doesn't defeat it, she just kind of gets it off her. The mask is still evil, it still exists, it's still around. And it's still gonna come back at some point. But you know, Whatever. <laughs> okay, what's next, Scotty boy? Cover review, cover review. Um, I'm in two minds about this cover. I liked the mask shop image. Because I like seeing all the different masks. I pretty much remember, I'm sure, in some of the books, they re they mention like a, a monkey mask that they see in the shop. Um, the haunted mask itself is a nice standout bright shade of green even though I believe the green colour is overused in the first three books particularly the Monster Blood one, I mean Christ there's a lot of green on the cover um, and I have, a, I have a strong mind for images and stuff um, I like the, the like I said on the Revenge of the Living Dummy cover I like the contrast of the green Horrorland entrance mouth against the purple backdrop same here I like the green mask face um, which is a nice contrast to the purpley blue rest of the, or most of the rest of the shop in the yellow. Um, I like the look of the mask, even though it looks nothing like the mask that's described in the first book. I don't think, I don't really remember. I can only ever picture the mask from the TV show when I read these books because the TV show mask is terrifying. And I'd love to have one, but I would bet it costs, uh, I would bet it costs a fortune to buy one of those. And I really can't afford to part with that kind of money right now. Um, yeah, so it's, the cover's okay. In some ways I don't like it because the mask is in the front of the shop. And the mask has never been in the front of the shop. The mask was always in the back of the shop. I think what I would have done, and it's something that I forgot to do in my last couple of reviews, where I, I said that what I would have done for the covers. I might do another video if I remember in future. What I would have done for this cover maybe would have been like a shot from inside the shop, so you got the inside of the shop, you got tons of masks around, and then in the background, I'm sorry if you can hear a scratching noise, I've got an itch on my leg, in the background you can see like a door open, and in in like a back door you can see there's like a light shining out, and it's laying weird shadows into the main mask shop, and you can see all these masks lined up in the back, which are really scary masks, similar to, like I said, I don't know if it's in the book, but it's in the TV show, they have all the masks like in a row on the stand, which is really scary. That kind of image, like but at the back of a shop, like, through a back door, with all these innocent looking masks, like a fairy mask and the I don't know, like a wolf or a gorilla and all these different princess things in the front, in the foreground, but the like a forced perspective of the things in the background. That'd be quite a nice spooky image, whereas this one has the mask in the front of the shop and I know it's me nitpicking, but I have a media background, so I know a lot about advertising and media and things like that. So this book in particular is a great advertisement, but in terms of my love for it as a cover once I've read the book, um, I'm happy for it to be a mask in a shop because that's where it originated. Yeah, but at this point it's not in the front of the, it was never in the front of the shops, so that's where my problem lies. 
Do I like the cover? Yes and no. I'm a, such a nitpicky guy. I know I tear things to shreds and I shouldn't do because it's a kid's book. But I'm trying to be an honest and unfair review. There is a couple of books coming up that I loved even though they have flaws. Um, there's one that I... I was going to say the one that I love that I know other people hate, but I won't get into that right now. I'll, get, I'll shut up. Scott, go back to the book. Uh, yeah, so that's my review of the cover. I like the mask. I'm not sure I've shown the, the image overall, but I do like the colours. The story, 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 story. My main issue here lies in the fact that it feels like someone wrote a ghost story about this horses and the, an accident happened in the, in the barn and tried to meld that with the haunted mask. It really feels like there's two different stories going on here. Whether R.O. Stein actually wrote this one or he did, or a ghostwriter wrote this, I'm not sure. Because if anyone's listening to this and doesn't know, R.O. Stein didn't write all the Goosebumps books. He said that he wrote like an outline for all of them, but didn't actually write them all. Some other writers actually wrote some of them. Um, I'm not good enough at literature to kind of point out which ones are his and which ones aren't. So I'm not going to do that. I'll leave that to... Another YouTube channel called This Time Me 83, and they really sometimes go into the, the actual grammar and the, the narr narrative involved and dissect whether they think it's Stein or not. Um, but this felt like it wasn't, and the reason for that is because it feels like there was two totally different books. The first Horrorland Haunted Mask book, and the second one even, was solely based around this mask and how it affects the person in it. Or it just felt like some weird ghost horse story that someone went, here's a story that's kind of half finished. Throw the haunted mask in there and try and mold the two together. And therein lies my main issue. It just felt like two totally different stories. One that was good. I'm happy to have the haunted mask back. And even to have that this it had it someone else had it in the past, maybe, if it was explained very well. And that they're kind of totally taken over by it we haven't seen anybody yet in the series taken over by the mask completely and they went it back and I'm fine with that I really am but these whole ghost horses were bollocks it was really bollocks like this is goosebumps man not really friendly ghost horses we're not reading like the babysitters club or something like that I know that's not supernatural I don't think but just it's, it's not good it's just not good I didn't give a shit at any point about ghost horses and the missing vegetables, and how they stampede over the ghost, and then nuzzle the haunted mask off her. Like, what is this shit? This is not Goosebumps. It started off Goosebumps with a... Okay, I'll say, this is the part that I really liked Goosebumps-wise. I liked that she was having visions of the mask. She was clearly, in a way, traumatised by what happened, but she was also stronger for it. So in that way, her character has developed, and that was good. Even Sabrina was more developed because she went behind Carly's back to protect her. And in that way, Sabrina's developed from the events of the first book. Ignoring the fact that there was stuff that was retconned. They've, they have developed as characters. And they've been haunted by this mask. And they, they go out and try and destroy it. And I can say I'm fine with there being someone else who had the mask in the past. Trying to get it back. Fantastic. I love that the, the shop came back into it. Because that was fantastic as well. And the, the shop owner came back in. Great. Link to the original book. Fantastic. Bring it, bring it all together. I love that the haunted mask was made someone so evil they were trying to kill people to get the mask back fantastic a fight between the two people with the mask and the one who wants the mask great it's just the rest of the stuff around it like i said the ghost story in the barn and the, the animals that died i just didn't care at all it's just not the haunted mask it's not and i'm sorry if you love this book and you're thinking what is this british bastard talking about i am so sorry if you think this is book is being ripped apart, wait until another book, because there is one more coming up, which I hated even more than this one. Um, it literally just felt like it was shoehorned in. It's similar to, and I'm going to use a good example here, of one thing that was shoehorned into something else, to, to kind of prove my point. Have, have you, any of you have seen Cloverfield, which is basically a story, a film about a monster attack in New York City? Cloverfield 2, or 10 Cloverfield Lane as it, as it was called, was well known as a film that was not meant to be Cloverfield 2. But they, after filming it, or partway through filming it, they decided to make it Cloverfield 2 and have links to the original. So it wasn't a direct sequel, but it was set in the same kind of universe. Similar to how the Horrorland series implies that all Goosebumps take place in the same world. At the same time, 
but not they don't normally cross over until the Horrorland part. Cloverfield 2 did that. It had links to the first one. But it did it in a way, at least in my opinion, that worked. It didn't try too hard to link them together. It just kind of made hints to it. And so you knew that they were taking place in the same kind of world. The first one took place first, and then the second one. Yes, it's a bit loose. Yes, it's a bit rough around the edges. Yes, sometimes it, to some people, it was shoehorned in to make more money. But to me, it works. This one, it doesn't. Because in Cloverfield, there were two storylines that were about alien or monster invasions. Whether it happened or not in the second one, I don't want to say. Because I don't want to spoil the, the, the plot line. Because even though the Cloverfield already happened, the events in Cloverfield 2 are in question till towards the end. Uh, but in this one, it feels like two totally different storylines trying to mesh together. Like the Haunted Mask is about a mask that makes you evil. And yes, I am happy for it to have a history where it hurt people. But it's just, it seems so odd to have this ghost story. It just didn't fit with me. I'm sorry guys, it just didn't. And I've said it a thousand times, so I'll stop going on about it. Because if you love this book, you're already switched off by now. Thinking this dickhead doesn't know what you're talking about. So please, if you love this book, please, 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 comment and tell me why I'm wrong. Because I would love to love this book more than I did. I just, I was so hyped for this book after so many 10, 15 years of not reading The Haunted Mask. And remembering that fondly the episode. To read this one really disappointed me. So, my rating for this one has got to be quite low. Because while there were good points and the twist where she put the mask on herself was good. Overall, I was pretty disappointed. So, I'm going to give this one a D. I'm sorry, I should have given it higher maybe. But, I'm going for a D, guys. I really am. Because um, my enjoyment of this book wasn't high. Like, even if there's a book with a lot of plot holes and things don't make sense. If I enjoy it for the fun batshit craziness or nostalgia that it brings to me great I'll give it a higher mark because nostalgia sometimes make you overlook the bad points I agree I'm fully happy to say that do I care no I'm not a scholar I'm not an English literature scholar I'm not here to pull apart the books literative literatively is that a word um I review these for my own fun my own enjoyment and my enjoyment of this book was pretty poor which is why I'm going to give it a C uh, a D um, I'm sorry if you like this, please, please let me know why and try and challenge me on why it was a good book. Because um, I'm happy to talk about why, the, why I disagreed or I'm happy for people to challenge me and to tell me why they think I'm wrong. Because that's what this world's about, right? That's what the whole YouTube thing's about. I'm not here just to plant my views and say this is the right review, right view. Because I'm wrong most of the time. But, you know, that's just my view of the book. Please tell me why I'm wrong. Please like, comment, or subscribe if you like this video. I would love to reach 25 subscribers in the next month or so. I've only got 18 at the moment, which is a shame. I don't know how to get more. But, you know, please share my, my video if you like this review. If you want to follow me on Twitter. I don't put loads on Twitter at the minute, but just if you want to get in contact with me as well. Um, it's at Nostalgic Nightmares without the vowels. At N-S-T-L-G-C-N-G-H-T-M-R-S. The link is in the description below. Like I said before, there's a few exciting things coming up that I will hopefully be able to say more about in the future. I want to know a few, a few more ideas. If you listen to this review and you're already involved with this future things, please don't put anything in the comments because I'd like to surprise some people once we've recorded the first episode. Also, like I said before, my next review will either be finally one of the original Goosebumps or it'll be one of the Goosebumps 2000. So I'm really excited for that. So for now guys, that's me over and out. Please tune in for the next one and thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves and have a nice day. And until next time guys, keep on screaming.